that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Week after week is the same message. Only Jesus saves. Same thing in Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. Death is coming. Death is more sure than your taxes this year. We just don't know when death is going to happen. And we preach on the streets before you die. That your eternal hope rests upon the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Salvation rests upon God's Son that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no room for religion in the eternal life. Unless you want to burn in the flames of hell forever. Because religion and science and atheism will bring you into the lake of fire that burneth forever. The only way to come out of those flames, to come out of a place called hell, is to put your faith in your trust by your heart. Through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is simple. It is to put your work upon the finished work of Jesus Christ, the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, if you're going to put your eternal rest upon religion, religion has never done anything toward the scriptures. Science doesn't want to acknowledge the scriptures. Atheism truly doesn't want to acknowledge God in the scriptures. But the salvation of God, the love of God, is Jesus Christ. The finished work that man has to get to God is Jesus Christ. There is nothing else. In Romans chapter 3, God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. God is true on his word. God cannot, he will not, is incapable of ever telling a lie. But man has mastered the lie. Let God be true, let every man be the liar. When man comes up with a religion, when man comes up with his own way as he built the Tower of Babel, that was man's way working to God and God disapproved it. You might say, oh, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Jehovah Witness, and God says, I don't approve of those. For the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, is Jesus Christ, and that is God's approved. So, let God be true, and Jesus said, I am the truth. That is your only means to be saved. There is no other way, there is no other hope, there is none that doeth good. You are not saved after you die if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no hope in your works. There is no hope in your religion. There is no hope in education. And far sure there is no hope in an atheist. Absolutely no hope but the blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
Okay, let me turn. It's Psalms 53. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. According to the scriptures in two places in the book of Psalms, Isaiah 53, number one. If you say there is no God, the Bible calls you a fool. I didn't call you a fool. The Bible calls you a fool for being atheist. Because there is a God. And God has manifested himself into his creation called the humans. And the only way you can get out of that manifestation if you are educated out, or if you just choose to walk blindly and not adhere to the conscience that God has given you. You've got to look around and say, hey, something, someone intelligent made everything that is to be made, whether seen or unseen. It cannot happen by chance, and it cannot happen without a supreme being. So in the realm of science, you've got to hope in a big bang. In the realm of atheism, you've got to hope that there's no God. And yet Titus 2.13 says the blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ who is God. Your science and your education, the Bible says back in Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, according to what you believe and not what God has prescribed for man to believe, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And that goes for what man believes. That's what man goes for what God has prescribed. Man-made religion, but God prescribed Jesus Christ. Man-made religion, let man be a liar, Romans chapter 3, verse number 4. And yet Jesus Christ is God approved for your soul. And if you die without the saving grace, without the belief in your heart that Jesus Christ is able to save your soul, you will wake up with your eyes in a place called hell, Luke chapter 16, and you will never come out, you cannot come out, and you cannot redo your life here on this planet. Once you enter into the realm of the eternal life, and the Bible says that there is life after death, it is in heaven by Jesus Christ, it is hell by everything else. God has set one standard for salvation of man, and that one standard is Jesus Christ. And yet the Apostle Paul has written to the Corinthians to tell us that there is another Jesus, and you got to make sure that your belief in Jesus is the biblical Jesus. Because there are unbiblical Jesuses out there. And many of them are called religion. The Catholics have a Jesus that you can digest. That's nowhere in the Bible. The Jehovah Witnesses has a Jesus that's not God. That's not Bible. The Seventh-day Adventist has a Jesus that celebrates and holidays the law and the Sabbath day. That's not the Bible. Now, the biblical Jesus is one that was born in Bethlehem of the Virgin Mary. And Mary did not stay a virgin her life. Mary brought the sin sinful offerings to the priest as prescribed by the law to say that she is a sinner. Jesus Christ, born of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ, Jewish. So those pictures of Jesus are a lie because Jesus is not white. He is not black. He's brown skinned after the manner of the Jewish people. And the biblical Jesus is Jesus who is God, and God is Jesus. 
100% man and 100% God in the flesh. Jesus Christ, who is the beloved of God, the only begotten Son of God. So when you believe on a Jesus that has a brother called Lucifer or Satan, that is not the biblical Jesus. Jesus has no brothers according to the scripture. He has no sisters in heaven. And yet when we put our, our thing on Mary, through Mary Jesus had brothers and sisters. That's scripture. And they even give some of them their names. Jesus Christ, Joseph was not his father. Jesus Christ, God is the father of Jesus. And that impregnation of Mary was done by the Holy Spirit, Luke chapter 1. That's the biblical Jesus. That is the Jesus that was born in Bethlehem in the manger, assigned to the shepherds, and grew up and gave his life, suffered that we might not suffer, upon Calvary's hill. From the manger to a cross, that man may have eternal life. And that eternal life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because the wages of sin is death and the gift of God's eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. You cannot expect to make out in the eternal life well and great without Jesus. Jesus said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Jesus, didn't I do this? Jesus, didn't I go here? Jesus, didn't I do this? And he replies again, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You're going to come to God with your works. You're going to come to God with your religion. You're going to come to God by your belief. You're going to come to God by your unbelief. And God will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now those that are born again and saved, they're going to come to God and God's going to say, what do you have me? I have the precious blood of your son. I have the precious blood of God. Acts 20, 28. And God, by the righteousness of your son through Jesus Christ, that is all I got. And to thou, well done. To hear God say, well done, is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. To be put in torment. To be put into the lake of fire. Where Satan and all his beings and angels. Is by your disbelief, your untrust, your, un un your inability to believe on God's Son for salvation. That's how simple it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved or anything else to be damned. Condemnation. God forbid, let God be true and every man a liar, as is written. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Righteousness to get into glory. Righteousness to get into heaven. Righteousness to see the eyes of God bleed. Is not your righteousness. We don't have any. We are sinners. We are cursed by God by our sins. 
We need righteousness to get to God and righteousness we do not have. For there is none righteous. No, not one. You can go to all the churches you want to. You can give all the money you want to. And you are still unrighteous in the eyes of God. Everything that you do will not get you pleased with God. It will get you into hell except the righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ. That is it. That is all that God will accept. The acceptance of God is Jesus Christ. There is none righteous. That's you, and that's me. That's what God thinks of mankind. And then with what God thinks of mankind and to get to heaven, we've got to have righteousness. And yet the Bible says none have righteousness. So you cannot get to heaven. at all except you believe on Jesus to receive his righteousness and when you impart to your life the righteousness of Jesus Christ that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures by that work of the gospel, by receiving that account of the merit of Jesus Christ, by that righteousness wrought in Jesus Christ, then you can have righteousness, but it's still not yours, it's Jesus. You see, we get to heaven only by Jesus. There is no other way, for Jesus said, I am the way. So when the Bible says in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaking, I am the way, pack up your religion. Destroy your science. Come out of your atheism. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There is no salvation in man's way. Man is not righteous. Man is without hope. But, the blessed hope, are to those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That hope comes by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, as is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. 3.10, Romans. In Romans 3.11, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Right here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Most of the majority of you here do not know what God expects from you. Some of you expect God to be happy when you show up in church on Sunday. He's not happy. He's not happy if you go into a church door without Jesus. Matter of fact, John the Baptist says in John 3.36, you get the wrath of God. Imagine going to church and God is not happy. Especially when a church is not Bible-centered, Christ-centered, about what the scriptures say about salvation. He said, why are you here every week? Because the Bible 
Daniel says, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. And unless I come into your ears with the gospel in the Bible, you're not going to know. You will not know the way of God. You don't want to know the way of God. It's the last thing for you to wake up on a Saturday and come to the farmer's market and say, why am I hearing someone preach Jesus to me? Put it inside the church. But the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because he knows you're not going to be in church. And with the ways of the churches in Daytona Beach, Florida, most of them are Satan-centered. Worldly entertainment without the right Bible, without the Gospel. There are people right now who are members of a church and they're looking at me with weird and odd eyeballs and saying, what on earth are you doing when street preaching is in the Bible? Men preaching the gospel is in the Bible. And there are people out there who do not know what God expects from them. And that is why God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because they do not know Romans chapter 3 verse 11. And then when we go to Romans chapter 10, you read about how shall they believe except the preacher be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that carry the gospel of peace? Romans chapter 10. And to realize what may be disturbing to you this Saturday morning is well pleasing in the eyes and ears of God. God loves when His Son is exalted and talked about and with the lips spoken about. When man has believed with the heart and the mouth is made confession unto His Son, Jesus Christ, that is well pleasing by God, maybe not by you. But there may be someone here today they may be thinking, well, I want to get right with God. I don't know how to do it. Come on over. We will take a King James Bible and we will show you the means of salvation. And when one has put on the righteousness of God, Your name will be put into a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. And in that book, when your name is found in that book, you have made reservations for all eternity to be present in God by His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't say to be in the presence of God through your religion that don't work. There is no coming to God in heaven by belief in evolution or theistic evolution. In order to be saved, God has to be creator. God has to be God. And when you got a religion like the Jehovah Witnesses, where God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God, you cannot be saved. That's another Jesus spoken by Paul. And when you reject the words of God that we're trying to offer to you, and reject them, and die rejecting what we are offering you by the gospel, when you die, you'll wake up in hell forever and ever and ever. There's no coming out. It's held and into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And
And many, maybe if not most of you, do not know, according to what the Bible says, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Out of today's messages, out of Romans chapter 3, let God be true, but let every man be a liar. There is none righteous, no, not one. And there are people who do not understand. You may know who Jesus is, but do you understand? You may know that Jesus was born in a manger, but do you understand? You may know about the cross, but do you understand? Do you understand the life of Jesus Christ in the acknowledgement and in the wisdom of God? Or is it just knowledge? I can quote you a thousand, not thousands upon things that I know. And they're not going to get me any closer to God. I know that an apple tree will produce an apple. So what? That's not going to get me to heaven. I know two plus two is four. That's not going to get me into heaven. That knowledge will not work when you stand before God. You've got to know. You've got to be wise. And then you've got to understand. And Romans chapter 3 says in verse 11, there is none that understand it. That's why you need Bible preaching. You need to come out from your religion. You need to come out from your belief. And you've got to come on to the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Who's the way? Who is the truth? And the understanding you get from the Bible and God and the Holy Spirit about the saving grace of Jesus Christ is the truth. Let God be true, but let every man be a liar. And if a man's going to get up in a pulpit and he's going to preach an anti-Jesus, an anti-biblical Jesus, an anti-Bible message, let every man be a liar. There are men in pulpits today that are lying to you. Now whether however they do it and why they do it, is no concern. The fact is, they are lying. And we are here preaching the truth. Preaching the light. Preaching the way. And that is Jesus Christ. And that is only Jesus Christ. There is no other. And Romans chapter 3 they're all going out of the way. Remember I tell you week after week after week, Jesus is the way. And Romans 3, 12 says they're all going out of the way. The Bible says many of you are not in the way of Jesus Christ. Many of you are condemned and com Many of you think you got a Jesus, but you're not in the way. Many of you may think you're okay, but you're not in the way of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 12 of 11 no, 12, they are all going out of the way. And when you've gone out the way of Jesus Christ, you are not on good ground. When you've gone out from the way of Jesus Christ, you are not righteous. When you are out of the way of Jesus Christ, you are not going to heaven. I don't care what church. I don't care where your money goes. When you are out of the way of Jesus, you will not go to heaven.
Verse 12 of chapter 3 of Romans. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And there have been people who come up to me, well, I'm good. Well, the Bible says you're not good. You don't do good. Romans chapter 3, verse 12. The Bible says none doeth good. That includes us. I said the Bible says none doeth good. That includes us. So, man is unrighteous. I do not have my righteousness. You may think you're right, and yet you're wrong. Romans chapter 3. The only righteousness of God is Jesus Christ, who is God. And the only right good, the only doing good, is set by Jesus Christ. When none doeth good, that's you and me, but that's not Jesus. And Romans chapter 3 sets out that righteousness and doing good needs to be to get to heaven. And then again, Romans chapter 3 says we don't have righteousness. We are not doing good. Well, that's got to be a contradiction, but it's not because it does not rest upon us. It rests upon the finished work of Jesus Christ who suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Romans 3 says, I have no righteousness. I don't do good, but Jesus does. And when I rest upon the righteousness of Jesus and the goodness and the good works of Jesus, then I'm saved. Then my name's written in the last book of life. How are you saved? How are you written in the last book of life by something that you did? Absolutely incorrect. I am saved by the righteousness and by the good works of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It is nothing you can do, and it's nothing I can do. It's all been finished by Jesus Christ. Religion only adds an artificial preservator which does not work. Science only tries to add artificialness unto the way of God, and it don't work because God does not take artificial preservators. He takes the natural preservator, Jesus Christ. There is no other substitute. There is no other way for Jesus again says, I am the way. Religion is not going to save you. It won't. It can. And I'll just read here their throat. That's you. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That's where you put dead bones. That's where you put dead bodies. Your mouth is full of death. According to Romans chapter 3 verse 13. You know in Matthew the Bible says we're going to give an account of every idle word. And Romans 3 says our throat is just filled of death. With their tongues, they have used deceit. I guarantee there are people who are deceiving people right here before my eyes. And the Bible says it would happen. The poison of asp is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursings and bitterness. That's what God thinks of you without righteousness. That's what God thinks of you when you don't do good. 
You are a filthy, foul mouth filled of death mouth. And when you say Hail Marys, or you say a prayer, or you sing a hymn, if you don't do it in the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, and you don't do it in the finished works of Jesus Christ, God says it's vile, it's wicked, and it's deadly. That's what God thinks of you without Jesus Christ. And you think you're going to use that same mouth to proclaim to God on why He should let you into heaven outside of Jesus Christ. Absolutely not. Hail Marys will not get you into heaven. Oh, I know Jesus. That's not going to get you to heaven. Your faith and belief with your heart and your profession with your mouth, the righteousness of God, the good works of God, then there's praise. I met all types of people, Jesus this and Jesus that. Well, match it with the Bible. Verse 17 of Romans 3. The way of peace have they not known. Peace is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit. And you cannot get that peace, you cannot get that fruit, unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And when you are not righteous, and you're not doing good works, which we don't have righteousness, which we cannot do good works, there is no peace. When there is righteousness by Jesus Christ, when there is the finished merit of Jesus Christ, then the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. But that only comes on what you choose to do with Jesus. And rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior, one of them results is no peace at all. There is no peace in hell. Back to Romans 3. Verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, oh, there we go, that's what we're looking for. Which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. So to get that righteousness that you do not have, the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 22 says that righteousness must be by Jesus Christ, the righteous. A prophet, priest, pope, preacher cannot give you the godly peace that God can give you by your faith and belief in Jesus. To obtain the righteousness to get to God to go to heaven. The Bible says in Romans 3.22 is to put your belief on Jesus Christ. And then you obtain the peace of God. The righteousness of God. That there is no other way. All the other ways are lies. And there is no life except by Jesus Christ and God's righteousness, which you obtain by believing on Jesus. 
Romans 3.22. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. The wages of sin is death. You are entitled to death and you will get death. And when you die in no righteousness, and you die in no good works, which we do not have righteousness, and we do not have good works, we die and go to hell. But if we were to put our faith in Jesus Christ and obtain the righteousness of God, and the good work of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The wages of sin is death. We're still sinners. We're still going to die. But the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, not life, the gift of eternal life after death, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift of God to live for all eternity with God is Jesus Christ. He does not say it's being a Catholic. There is no word of a Baptist. There is no atheist found in the Bible. It can't be by baptism because baptism is a work and God says we don't do no good works. It can't be going to church because church is a work and we don't do good works. I'll give money to a charity. You can't give money to a charity because that's a work and we don't do good works. Romans chapter 3. And yet the only pleasing work that God sees is acceptable is Jesus Christ suffering and dying and being buried and being risen from the grave three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Church attendance for salvation, that's not in the scriptures. Baptism to be saved is not in the scriptures. Catholic church is not in the scriptures. Baptist church is not in the scriptures. Again, you cannot find any atheists in the Bible. But you can find Jesus Christ saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when Romans chapter 3 says, For all have sinned, that's all of us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we come short, you're not going to heaven. Jesus went all the way. We came up short. We have no righteousness. We have no good works. But Jesus does. And that righteousness comes by believing on God, Jesus, and obtaining the peace of God, Romans chapter 3, because all have sinned. We can't do it. We come short. So no matter where you stand in living on this earth, or moon, whatever in the future holds, Whatever you do, if it's outside of Jesus Christ, to say you're going to heaven, you come short. You won't make it. You cannot make it. You cannot come up short and think you're going to go to heaven when the Bible proclaims that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You're a sinner. You come up short.
no matter what you will do outside of Jesus Christ, you come up short. Whatever you think and believe outside of Jesus Christ, you come up short. Sinners come up short. And Jesus Christ fills in that gap. Jesus Christ through the cross, through the death, through the burial, through the resurrection, builds that bridge between you and God as mediator. Mary cannot fill that gap. Your faith and your belief and your trust must rest upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Add nothing to it. The way of salvation has been by God through Jesus Christ and you cannot add anything to it to make it well. Absolutely nothing can be added to God's plan of salvation. You're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Anything else in your righteousness that you don't have, and in your good works that you do not have, and the sinner that you are, Romans chapter 3, you come short and you will not make it to heaven. For with, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That gets your name in the Lamb's book of life. That Jesus Christ, His works, His righteousness will get you to heaven. Nothing else. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It's a must. But then God gives you a free will. God gives you a free will. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Or you can believe anything else you want to believe and go to hell. But Jesus said you must be born again. And that new birth takes place by God, the Son, Jesus Christ. Nothing else. That's the book of Romans chapter 3 in a nutshell of salvation. We do not have righteousness, but we need righteousness. We do not do good works, but we need good works. We are sinners. We come short. And say, God, well, how do I come unsure? Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by Jesus Christ alone. And that's the words of Jesus.